All right, so we're diving into the second age of Middle Earth, and uh, well, you want to talk Anatar, right? Lord of Gifts, definitely. After seeing Rings of Power season two, I mean, everyone's got questions. Starts off seeming all benevolent, then bam, Sauron, the ultimate long game. It really is deception on a grand scale. What gets me is how he hones in on the elves' ambition, especially over in a region. Right, a region. With Celebrimber trying to outdo his granddad, Fionor, they were top-tier craftsmen, yeah. but what made them such easy targets for Sauron? Well, it's more than just ambition. It's the yeah. flavor of it, you know? These elves, they're wired to create, to be even better than the generations before, the world's something to perfect to them. And Sauron, disguised as Anatar, he slides in like, hey, I'm the key to unlocking your full potential. And the name itself, Anatar. Lord of Gifts and Queen, yeah, it's almost too on the nose, isn't it? Did nobody pick up on that? Oh, some did. Gilgalad, the High King, he had his suspicions. And Galadriel, sharp as ever, she sensed something dark around Anatar. Eh? Celebrimber, he was too busy chasing his granddad's legacy to listen. Blinded by the shiny new tools, basically. Mm. So he teams up with Anatar, and they start cranking out rings of power. But wasn't Sauron more of a destroyer than a maker? How do you even have the skills for this? That goes way back. See, Sauron used to be a Maya, like a, a powerful spirit dude, served yeah. under Ollie, the god of craftsmanship. Kind of ironic, right? Before going all Dark Lord, he was a master craftsman himself. So he basically weaponized his old skill set. It wasn't just offering power, it was the expertise they craved. No wonder they ate it up. Exactly. With Anatar's guidance, boom. Yeah. 16 rings of power. Seven for the Dwarf Lords, nine for us mortals. But, and this is key, Sauron wove his influence into those rings. Each was like a little conduit for his will. Well, Makes the wearer more ambitious, yeah, but also way more vulnerable. Okay, so powerful, but with strings attached. You said Celebrimber starts having second thoughts, though. Then says something's fishy. It's subtle at first, you know, like a growing unease. Imagine. Yeah, yeah pressure to live up to his family name and suddenly he's got these doubts about the very power he's wielding but it shows how inherently good Celebrimber is that he even feels this dissonance at all Galadriel always keeping watch she senses it too gives him another warning way more urgent this time this time he listens right, right. or is the allure of creation too strong he's torn but what he does incredibly daring Driven by the need for something pure, something untouched by Anatar, he goes and forges three more rings in secret. These are the three elven rings, Nenya, Velia, and Narya. He's playing a high-stakes game against a master manipulator. Why three more rings? What's the angle? Because Sauron had zero part in making them. These three were pure celebrimber, imbued with the elves' connection to nature. This act of defiance, this creating something free of Sauron's will, absolutely crucial. It's a tiny spark of hope when everything's getting darker. It's a huge gamble, though, outmaneuvering Sauron, even with three secret rings. What happens when Sauron figures it out? Sauron finishes his big plan, forges the one ring in Mount Doom, and the second he puts it on, hmm. Celebrimber just knows the betrayal, the manipulation, the sheer scale of it. It all hits him at once. Talk about a horrifying realization. You've been played like a fiddle by the Dark Lord himself. What does Celebrimber even do at that point? He knows he's messed up, but he also knows those three rings. That's the only shot they've got. What he does next, that'll decide the fate of Middle-earth. So Celebrimber's got this huge problem on his hands. Sauron, the One Ring, what's he do with these three secret rings? He makes a choice, one that's going to echo through the ages, decides he's got to protect the three rings, so he sends them away. Who does he trust with that kind of power? Gilgal gets one. High King of the Nolda, right. Makes sense. <laughs> and of course, Galadriel. She'd been warning him about this whole mess from the start. Smart move. But what about Celebrimmer himself? He's still in danger, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Sauron, juiced up on one ring power, unleashes his forces. A region, this beautiful place, known for its art and craftsmanship, suddenly it's a war zone. And Celebrimber, he knows he's partly responsible. Does he just give up? No way. He picks up a sword and fights alongside his people, defending a region against Sauron's armies. Think about the weight of that decision, fighting for your home, knowing you helped lead it to ruin. That's heavy stuff. What chance did they have against Sauron? He's got the One Ring. It's got to be like fighting a god. They fought hard, desperately, but it wasn't a fair fight. A region fell. And Celebrimber, Sauron captured him. Knowing Sauron, I don't even want to imagine what happened next. He's brought before Sauron, and it's brutal. Sauron's obsessed with controlling all the rings, demands to know where the three rings are. Surely Celebrimber cracked under that kind of pressure. No. 
Even after everything, all the pain, Celebrimber refused to break. He knew what was at stake. Knew those rings had to stay hidden. Such defiance. It speaks volumes about his character. So what happened? What became of him? He died a prisoner, never revealing the secret. His sacrifice bought Middle-earth some time, kept a little flame of hope alive, and his death. It was a wake-up call. The elves finally realized how dangerous Sauron was. Exactly. Seeing Celebrimber tortured, killed, it united the elves and those men who opposed Sauron. That's what led to the last alliance of elves and men, a final stand against the darkness. And that brings us to the climax of the Second Age. But before we move on, we've got to acknowledge Celebrimber's story is tragic, sure, but inspiring too. He messed up, big time, but he faced the music with guts. Show that even when things are darkest, when you think it's all your fault, there's still room for defiance, for sacrifice, for hope. I agree. His legacy is complicated. A victim of Sauron, but also a hero who stood up to him. It reminds us that even the smartest among us can get tricked, but it's never too late to choose courage, to fight for what's right no matter the cost. And that fight, that last stand against Sauron, that's a story for the ages. But for now, let's switch gears to another big event from the Second Age. One that shows what happens when pride and ambition run wild. The rise and fall of Numenor. We've talked about ambition, right? But how does Numenor, this whole legendary island kingdom, how does that tie in? Numenor. It's like a cautionary tale, you know. Shows what happens when power goes unchecked. How pride can mess up even the good guys. These people, they were blessed by the Valar themselves. Long life wisdom ruled the seas they had it made but there was a catch right with their long lives yeah see elves are bound to the fate of the world but numenorians long lived yeah but still mortal and yeah, that yeah. knowledge that shadow of death it messed with them so the more powerful they got the more they feared losing it exactly they started envying the elves resenting the valar figured hey why them and not us and right into that resentment steps sauron Classic Sauron. Of course. Where there's drama, there's Sauron. But how'd he pull it off? These are Numenorians. They knew his tricks. Remember, the guy's a master manipulator. Couldn't tempt them with shiny rings this time, so he went deeper. Mm -hmm. Offered them dominion over death itself. Whoa. Okay, how'd that work? He started whispering about Valinor, the Undying Lands. Told them the Valar were hoarding immortality, keeping it for themselves. Turned them against their own benefactors. Bold move. But it worked. Pride's a hell of a drug. Sauron played them like a fiddle, told them what they wanted to hear, that they were being cheated, that they deserved better. And the kings, Ooh. the rulers, they had all that history to learn from, didn't they? Some saw through it at first, but Sauron, he's patient, sneaky. Just a little doubt here, a little resentment there. Over generations, the kings, they started listening. They wanted that eternal life, and Sauron knew how to dangle it. So they turned away from those who'd helped them, from the very things that made them great. What happened? Did they go to war with the Valar? Basically. They built this huge E fleet of ships, bigger than anything anyone had ever seen. Sailed west, straight towards Valinor, ready to take immortality by force. Wow. Challenging the powers that be. What was Sauron's angle? Did he really think they could win? Even Sauron, for all his smarts, I think he underestimated the Valar. He wanted to use the Numenorians, create chaos, maybe even weaken both sides in some grand showdown. Dominion through destruction, that was his style. And what about the Numenorians? Their fleet, their shot at eternal life. What happened? Bride goeth before the fall, mm -hmm. right? They got to Valinor and the Valar. Well, let's just say they weren't happy. The world was reshaped. Storms, earthquakes, the whole deal. And Numenor, gone. Sunk beneath the waves. So it did backfire on Sauron. Took down Numenor, but got caught in the crossfire himself. His physical form got destroyed, didn't it? Yeah, you could say that. Pyrrhic victory, maybe. Yeah. But... The world changed forever. The geography, everything. The Numenorians who survived, the ones who stayed true, they founded Gondor and Arnor in Middle-earth. So, bittersweet ending, I guess. Numenor. A story of ambition, pride, and one epic collapse. A good reminder that even the most powerful empires can crumble. All it takes is a little nudge in the wrong direction. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the Second Age. We covered a lot of ground. From the tragedy of Celebrimber to the hubris of Numenor, it's clear that power, both magical and political, has a way of testing even the best intentions. And who knows what the future holds. Thanks for listening, and until next time, keep exploring the worlds that ignite your imagination.